Yo, Internet, what's up? Uh, Double Shockers podcast episode four. Uh, I'm your host, Greg Jones, alongside with Peter K. Hey, what's up, guys? What's happening, Peter? What's happening, Greg? So, it is August 26, uh, 2016, as of this recording, and a uh, pretty slow week in the gaming industry, although we do have a few big stories. We're going to get to that later. But first, we're going to start off with what we've been playing, Pete. All right, so... I just recently picked up Overwatch. I know it's a little, I'm a little late to the game. I wanted to give it a go, and it's actually really fun. I'm liking it a lot. I'm not a, I'm not a huge FPS person. Uh, I used to be back in the day, but you know, you know how they're all the same, just rehashes of the same game. That Call of Duty syndrome. I, I haven't played uh, Overwatch or an FPS in a while, actually. So uh, this is Blizzard, right? It is, yeah. Okay, and would you, it's competitive. It's single player. No, and there's no single player aspect at all to it. Oh, there's no story at all. There's no campaign. It's there just... is a story that they're pushing. Okay. Uh, it's a very vague story. Basically, um, the world used to be protected by these heroes. I think they're called the Overwatch heroes. I'm not too sure. Oh. Uh, and they were disbanded for some reason. And now, just recently, they started getting back together because there's a new evil. Okay, so it's a completely like. Yeah, whatever. Stupid throwaway story. Pretty just much. there for filler. Yeah. It's just to get um, just to get familiar with the characters, basically, and to know which ones are evil, which ones are good. Okay, I, I know you used to play like a lot of Call of Duty back in the day, right? Yeah, that was a while ago. Okay, would you consider this as competitive as Call of Duty? Or would you think it's a more laid-back experience, hop in, play a few rounds? You know, they do have a competitive uh, feature. So after level 20, uh, you start getting uh, into ranked games. Um, and there's seasons in it, I think. I think they're at season three or four. So it is pretty competitive. Uh, would I call it as competitive as Call of Duty? No. It's a little more kiddie, a little more childish, a little more kid friendly, I would say, with the graphics and, the, and just well, the way it's it looks. More cartoon- well, the graphics are nice, actually. It, they're, they're beautiful, but it, it is more cartoony. Uh, but it's more of a laid back, kick back experience. Just uh, get home after a long day of work and just jump into a game, jump out. Okay. I, I did check up a few of the character designs. I like them. Tracer and all these. They're yeah, cool. they're very cool. Who do you play? So, I'm really bad at the game. Okay. I play Bastion. Bastion is basically a really cheap tank. Um, high, uh, I guess it's called rapid fire. Like a high high fire rate. So, he's like a fast character? He's not very, he's very tanky. Okay. Not tanky, in the, he's a tank, basically. Oh, okay. Not a huge amount of health. But he has like a machine gun on him, so he can take out people like... Okay, so is this a game where you have to always work as a team in order to succeed? Yes. Okay. You need to. So uh, just because it's an FPS-ish, it doesn't mean that you can just pick any character and run in. Uh, you have your defensive types, you have your attackers, you have your special, and you have your healers. Your medics. It's class-based? Like, like the characters have their own roles? They do, yeah. So, would you say it's kind of like a Team Fortress 2 kind of thing? Where everyone has a, a specific role? Look, I didn't, I haven't played Team Fortress. Okay. Yeah, All right. so I don't know. <laughs> okay. I'll give so, you an example. Are there healers? Are there tanks? For sure, yeah. There... Um, so, you have your attackers, right? Yeah, like Genji, who's basically a ninja. Uh, he has some special features. He can double jump. Most characters can't. Okay. He can uh, run, he can run up walls. Oh, okay. Most characters count. But he's pretty weak in the sense that he has throwing knives instead of a gun. Nice. And he has a sword. Okay. It's katana. Um, every character has a super. You charge it up. Wait, so like, this Genji guy doesn't have a gun? No. So he's literally bringing a knife to a gunfight? <laughs> yes. As ridiculous as that sounds, okay. he could be OP if you know how to use him properly. Okay. I don't, so I, I die every time I use him. Nice. Yeah, I get like no kills. <laughs> It's pretty sad. But his special is sick. So he has a special and he also has an ability. Every character has like a a secondary ability. His secondary ability is deflecting bullets or deflecting whatever you're throwing, someone's throwing at you. Okay, that's pretty badass. Yeah, so for example, when I'm playing Bastion and I'm just shooting, you know, my my gun off, if this guy comes in front of me and uses his his attack, it's over for me. Okay. Because all the bullets just come right back at me. Um, and his super is he takes out his katana and he just starts going ape shit on everyone, just cutting everyone up, dealing massive damage. Massive damage? Yeah, he's also very fast. Okay. 
you know so that's, that's your first attacker you have uh, what's your name you have the reaper okay uh, two shotguns moose uh, pretty slow I've seen most of the designs. The characters are pretty cool. Yeah, they're, they're all very, cool, but... But they're mm-hmm. all different. That's the thing. So you yeah. have your shotgun guy. You have some chick that just jumps into the air really high and starts shooting rocket rockets yeah, okay. on the ground. Um, yeah, you have your healers. You have... Um, you have... What are they called? Engineers? Basically, this guy makes like... Um, what do you call them? Okay, this sounds a little Team Fortress. Yeah. So he makes little sentries. Okay, yeah. Pl- yeah. Pl- what are they called? What are those guys called? I don't know, little is there like a term for them? I don't know. Like Builders, call them engineers. Eh? No, it's usually engineers. Yeah, yeah. So there's a very diverse. Uh, there's a melee guy. Okay. Another melee guy. Ah, it's fun. So, do you see yourself playing this in the future, or is this something that's not going to really hold your attention? Well, look for me. This is just. Um, I played once in a while. Oh, it's a it's a get in, play a few rounds, get back out. That's right. Okay. All right. But I'm having fun with it, so yeah. Okay. Uh, would you recommend it? Oh, for sure. It's not that expensive either, eh? I don't know. I think I picked it up for 40 bucks. Okay, so this isn't a free-to-play. No, 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 Okay, no. this is a full-fledged, you buy it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, have you been playing anything else? Uh, not really, man. No. All right. Uh, I've been playing Worms. Double oh, that's true. Worms came out, eh? A couple yes. days ago. Yes, I'm a huge Worms fan. Uh, back in the day with Armageddon and Worms Old Party... I I used to be ranked pretty pretty high. Uh, I played that game religiously. I love Worms, even though uh, after Worms World Party, it just the games fell off. They just weren't that good. They went to 3D. They tried to do a bunch of stuff. It was really bad. Not well received. Uh, the last good Worms game wasn't even really a Worms game. It was like uh, Worms Crazy Golf, which was not bad. But if anyone wants to check it out, but it was yeah, it was Worms playing golf. It was it was pretty uh, pretty. It was good. 3D. And uh, no, it was 2D. 2D. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but this new one, it is a pure return to form. Team Seventeen just, I, I think, did such a great job with the game. Hand drawn uh, graphics, uh, the sound effects, uh, the effects in general. Just the graphics are great for a Worms game. Went back to 2D, did it smart, stayed away from that 3D bullshit. Uh, but it is more Worms. Uh, but it is a return to form. So whoever thought Worms lost their way, this game is totally worth getting back into. For someone that hasn't played a Worms game before, would you recommend this one? Or would you tell them to go back and play one of the originals, one of the classics? The thing is, it has this one has changed, uh, but it hasn't changed so much as it changes the formula. If anything, it stays close to the formula. That's why it works so well. But I'd say this this one's a great uh, one to jump into. It's the game's not overly difficult or complicated to understand. It's very simple, and with the new pretty graphics and everything, I don't know. It's it's nice to look at too. It's very easy. I'd say jump in. It's totally worth it. Super fun, but you gotta like worms. Turn based strategy, you know. Would you call this a a reboot? Um, so to say, in that it'll bring in the younger generations with the. It just you know the clean graphics everything is just looking a little better i don't know i i, I hope it, it gets people into it because worms is a great franchise it's super fun worms used to be huge i guess i don't i don't know yeah but i remember back in elementary school um beginning of high school a lot of my friends used to play okay so it was pretty big uh, in my area okay that's uh it's really good i used to always play uh like with cousins or family members that would come over and would play on the computer so there was a lot of that but it was it was good this one too on it's on steam i think it's 30 bucks it's good it's worth it uh team 17 did a good job and that's what i've been playing mostly. have you have you heard of um gunbound gunbound so instead of playing worms when we uh, let's say my last year of high school everyone started playing this game called gunbound it was very worms ish it was a turn-based strategy it was yeah 2d yeah. Okay. Never heard of it? No? No. Okay, okay. I'm just wondering. Was it... Did it come out before Worms? I'm sorry? Did it come out before Worms? No, no. It, it was like a copy of Worms, just with uh, with tanks. As, like, the skin was tanks instead of Worms. Okay. That's basically it. Okay. Yeah. Well, never heard of it. Okay, then. Uh, moving on. Yeah, okay, moving on. So, t- moving on to the topic of the show, Pete. 
So, topic of the show, we have to talk about it. PS4 Slim. This thing, there's an unboxing video of it on the net. Sony hasn't even announced that it exists. This is crazy. They must be furious. They're tripping. Yeah. This is crazy. Okay, so so there was a video, an unboxing. Yeah, which we saw. You're right, right. I'm, we'll have a video up. Just yeah, to, for sure. Case. It'll be playing. Uh, okay, so first thing I noticed, first thing they showed us was the controller. The controller yeah. changed a bit. It did. We have like an LED strip right along the, the face. The light bar at the top. Yeah. It is exactly it, yeah. That's it. It uh, mimics the color that the controller's portraying on its underneath. Yeah, exactly. Kind of. Yeah. You don't have to turn around the controller to see what color yeah, you are yeah. and what player you are, right? Player yeah. one or two. Um, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Because usually when when a slim comes out, they cut back. In this case, they actually added something. You think so? Well, normally, don't they cut back? Well, I think, watching the video, I think they, well, I don't think it's as glorious looking as our originals. No, for sure it's not. But what I'm saying is that, um, for the controller at least, they actually added a feature. Yeah. It's that, tr- that in, in like PS3 Slim or PS2 Slim, they never added something. They never added yeah. something extra. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, uh, what else did you notice? The, the buttons, the D-pad in particular, was very gray. And the circle around the D-pad is the matte. And then I was looking at the triggers, and they don't look they don't look the same. They They're look a little different. longer, a little more narrow. They, yeah, they look pointier. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that, but nah. are I they have a PlayStation 4. So. Are they discontinuing the, the regular PlayStation 4 controller? Well, they I, haven't said anything yet, right? So we don't even know. This thing's not even, yeah, it's not even announced. Yeah, that's true. It, this is, uh, that's why this is huge. I don't know how that person got his hands on it. That's nuts, man. Yeah. Uh, this guy's been getting so much shit. I, I don't know how this happens. <laughs> don't ask Unboxing me. video before the company even announces its existence. Did you think a PS4 Slim was going to come? Or did you think they were going to go straight to this uh, PS Neo yeah. or whatever? I thought the Neo was going to be somewhat slimish. So, yeah, PS4 Slim, like, straight left, straight out of the left field. I, okay. I wasn't even thinking about it. The thing is, I always thought they were going to make a PS4 Slim... But then when I heard rumors about the the Neo or the 4.5, whatever you want to call it, with its uh, VR-capable uh, upgraded uh, GPU, CPU, whatever, I'm like, okay, they're not gonna they're not gonna bring a Slim. There's no real point because then you're gonna have three SKUs, and the Slim's gonna look like the real cheap one because you're gonna have the cheap one, right? You're gonna have the normal one, which everyone has, and then the Neo that's gonna be like the premium version. I think it's gonna be very confusing for parents come uh, come Christmas. I think it's going to be confusing for gamers. And let me explain. You're going to have, okay, three SKUs basically, which is going to be whatever, more of a hassle for retailers. But the two SKUs I'm talking about are the original PlayStation 4s that we have and this Neo, this upgraded version. Now, we've already heard developers like Sean Murray of No Man's Sky um, talking about how they could have done so much more with all this extra horsepower. And uh, this this raises the question, will developers have to make two versions of their game? And also, are they going to need to go through the certification process twice? I've read up on the certification process a bit. It's super expensive and it's super hectic for developers. Are they want to go, go through this twice? Sony has to have a plan. Right, because it's it's weird. It's it's alienating most of your fan base. You have I don't know how many PS4s are out in the wild now. 40, 50 million. I, I could be wrong. I don't know. But there's a lot of them, and I don't know. This is is this gonna alienate the rest of us? See, are okay. we gonna get the shittier version of a game now? Now the the only difference between the PlayStation Four and the PlayStation Four Neo, from what we understand, is the resolution, right? Neo is 4K. Obviously, for Neo to be pushing 4K, it has to be stronger. It has to be faster. That's it. But they're advertising 4K. I think that's all they're doing. Um, 4K is just textures, right? High-res textures. That's all it is. So I don't think you're going to have to do a double certification. I don't think any of that's going to happen. They're just okay. going to be... A, a, 
extra textures. And if the game disc or the software reads that you have a PlayStation 4, it won't even download the textures. If, it, if you have the Neo, yeah, the textures are going to be downloaded and applied. That's what I think. So you don't think it's going to be two games? Do you think it's going to be one game? Like, let's say the lowest common denominator, the original PlayStation 4, and then there's going to be like a patch? Or a high-res sort of download. Add okay. Yeah, like, remember Skyrim? That's very PC-like, yeah. Yeah. Well, look, there, um, was it Fallout 4? Uh, on the PlayStation 4, and I think on the, no, I think just PlayStation 4, they have a mod community on a console. Yeah. You heard about that? Yeah, that came in... Uh... That came in later, though. I think it, Xbox it did come or, in later, yeah. but it's pretty new for consoles to have that. No, thing. yeah, for sure. Uh, so, you know, looking at that, I wouldn't think it's very far fetched to also uh, to bring in, uh, you know, uh, textures. And I guess it would. It'd be smarter. It'd be smarter. It'd make a lot more sense. It's just weird. And it's you're right. It alienates a lot so of a right lot now. of gamers. Yeah. Um, now, here's my question to you: uh, Do you think that the PlayStation Four Neo? towards the end of its life cycle will have PlayStation Neo exclusive content. I think it would be very, very dumb for Sony to do that because that's a big, uh, excuse my language, fuck you to all of the rest of us that bought the console, the regular one. That's crazy. You can't do that. Not when your install base is this big. That's, that's dumb. The thing is now... If they do want to Trojan horse the Neo into people's living rooms, the price has to be right. I just I just can't see the price being that low. You're going to have the Slim, at, which we don't know what it's going to be priced at. We're not even supposed to know it exists yet. The regular PlayStation, which is still n not inexpensive. No, it's, it's still expensive, dude. I mean, yeah. And then what are you going to have the Neo at? I don't know. I don't know what they're going to have to do. Because no. then, to get rid of all the other... If, if they really want to push Neo, they have to get rid of all the other stock of the regular PlayStation 4s, right? They have to discount it like crazy, because no one's going to buy it. Are they going to discontinue the regular PS4s in manufacturing? Well, Typically, I think is that what will, happens? If, if the Neo ends up becoming the next, you know? Or maybe they'll have in like a trade-in program. Trade in your PlayStation, get this much off the Neo but they're going to be stuck with a bunch of PlayStation 4s, I don't know. Well, when when uh, when the Slim comes out eventually, normally when a Slim cut-down version of a console comes out, is the regular version discontinued altogether? Is that how it works? Well, not... I don't know. I think eventually, yes. When your PS3 died out and you bought the other, the Slim... I bought a Slim, yeah. You bought the Slim because you wanted the Slim or because that's all you could find? Actually, I went to EB Games, and that's the only thing they had. Okay, so then they probably do this. I, I guess so. Yeah. Hmm. So I guess then at the end of the day, we're going to have the Slim, or we're going to have the Neo. And I think they did this on purpose. They make the Slim look like crap, because if you look at it, it's a lot smaller. Yeah. If the console itself is all matte. The buttons look cheap. It looks like a Slim, right? Like, well, you know, it doesn't look that bad looking, looking at it. It looks okay, but then imagine how the Neo is going to look, right? Yeah. And then imagine going to EB Games or wherever you go to buy your stuff and you're faced with something that looks just pristine, yeah, right? That's it. And then the slim. It's just I don't see people going to the counter and being like, yeah, I'd like the shitty version of this console. There you go. You know, I don't know. But then again, it begs the question, is the Neo really only going to be for VR purposes in terms of its usage? Like, I don't think devs are going to be allowed. Sony must have made some rules to be like, listen... You can't have this game running on a Neo and it's running at 20 frames more. That's going to be disaster. Because that's going to piss off a lot of gamers, right? Like, let's say I have a regular PlayStation 4. You have a Neo. We both buy the same game. I'm stuck at 30, but you're running 60 frames a second. You know what? They might do that. Oh, man. Yeah, I, it's... I think it would be very dumb. Cause... It'd be ridiculous. Okay, but look. That will get a lot of people pissed off at Sony, and I don't think Sony wants people to be pissed off at them because of... Uh, they've been they've been very... Yeah, uh, but Greg, are there any PS4 games that stutter? Any PS4 games that stutter? I don't think any that I've played. You have The Witcher on, on the PS4, right? Yeah. Does it ever stutter? Sometimes in, the, in like the menu, right? 
You pull you know up what? the menu and there's a little bit of a lag, a little bit of a. But that was the that was the first menu in The Witcher. After that massive update that they redid the whole like user interface, it was it was smoother. It still stuttered a bit, but I don't know if that's the PlayStation's fault. You think that it's just, I don't know, but uh, imagine it is right, and then imagine the Neo just fixes that just because it has a little bit more horsepower. Is that an issue? To you? No. It's you can't like stop a it. sleepover or anything. That's, that's no, but it's now, insignificant. If stuff like that gets fixed, okay. But I'm talking about major leaps in like frame rate or texture or resolution. That would be ridiculous in Sony's part. But that's why that the Neo is very very weird. And also like they they almost like pulled it back and send it back to the drawing board. I feel after Microsoft's announcement of the Scorpio. Well, that's supposed to have like six teraflops of computing power it's supposed to be the most powerful po console ever the scorpio is a is like the next gen of consoles right it's not an xbox one point five no it's it's the next thing but that screwed up the whole ecosystem i f i feel so now when is scorpio coming out do we know i don't know we don't know anything all we know well, that's going to be the shit i think i don't i want to say next year but um i know the neo is coming out soon yeah and that does screw everyone i just feel like the e ecosystem got all screwed up now because the manufacturers used to kind of announce their shit at the same time really it's like okay guys it's been uh i don't know six years it's been a few years now it's time to go to the next one now it's like i feel like we're getting a console leap way sooner than we should be i think that has to do with um just with technology in general Look at uh, look at Nvidia, right? With yeah, but, cards. Yeah, but I, 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 huge jump. I don't know if you should compare consoles to the PC space, well, you, even though they're becoming more computer-like. Because I think you, you kind of have to. Yeah, but you can't do that if your console's not modular. I get. Well, okay. Look, um, you're gonna keep making pumping out boxes, different boxes. No, no one's gonna. No, but the the 10 series, right, for Nvidia. Yeah. Pascal. Leaps and bounds. Yeah, leaps and bounds ahead of what Nvidia had before, right? And usually when things like this happen, for example, uh, for example, when the Kepler came out, right? It was a shit, yeah. Back it back. was a shit, and that's when the PS4 came out, right? So they're they're very similar in horsepower. Okay, I thought the Kepler still smashed uh, the... By like a little bit. Okay. Uh, but, but they're pretty similar. Um, and now you have the 10 series that came out. And I'm guessing the 10 series is going to be on par with uh, Xbox's... Scorpio? Scorpio, right. Sony's just left in the dust. With their Neo, unless well, it, they it go really back did to the take the thunder. Board. It took the thunder out of their Neo, I think. Big time. I sure. wouldn't be surprised if they just scrap it all together, or maybe keep the name and say, you know what, guys, it's not going to be a like a midway console thing, right? It's not going to be a point five. Wait, so you think this is going to be like PlayStation Five? Maybe. I don't think so. I yeah, really well, don't think so. Look, after X, after Microsoft's uh, bullshit Scorpio. I think Sony's like, oh damn. Yeah, we didn't expect this so fast. They went back to the drawing board. They pumped the thing up with a bit more juice. That wouldn't I make sense. I still don't think it's gonna touch. That the wouldn't make sense, dude. Yeah, yeah, but I think they have to. It wouldn't make sense just to pump it up a little bit and say, "Hey, this is it," because don't forget, they have to make the game for the PS4 original and Neo. So what are you saying? They leave it as a normal. They have to. But a normal PS4 can't do VR well. No. That's why they need the extra horsepower. What I'm saying is, I think they have to compete with the Scorpio they have to go back to the drawing board and just make a kick-ass console a new one I don't know I don't know if they need to compete with Scorpio right now okay no no they can't go the way of Nintendo Dude. well no I'm not saying that but I'm just saying they don't need to they don't need to follow well, look, Scorpio's foot they have the market share they have the install base they're killing it in terms it of self they've it distracts dude I think it distracts big time you're gonna have the Scorpio Games are going to be made on the Scorpio. The exclusives using the Scorpio power are going to be like things that we've never seen before, I think. But right? then again, you're right, but this is all speculation. We don't know what the Neo is. We don't. We don't know how much power. This is going to be a way different conversation when we got specs. No, but, but Sony also said that the original PS4 has to play the Neo games, right? Whatever comes out has to play on the Neo and has to also be playable on the PS4. Yeah, it is because of the Morpheus. Yeah. Well, the but even horsepower wise, you, you can't make a kick-ass game like a crazy next-gen game 
and then also have it run on the PS4, right? On the original. Yeah. They have to scale back. They have to... So, I don't know, man. I think they're just going to lose that that, that thunder confusing. they have right now. In it's front confusing because we have a, a big, big console powerhouse in the Scorpio coming like in a halfway point. Yeah. It, it feels too soon. There is literally... You can rank them right now. For the first time ever, you can actually rank them and say, okay, look, Scorpio is going to be top the king of the hill yeah you're gonna have the ps4 ps neo whatever you want to call it yeah mid once we get the specs we'll and then you're gonna have the nx as like a little kitty thing we don't know what the nx is either we don't but we know from nintendo's past that it's not gonna be a powerhouse but i heard it's gonna be a powerhouse compared to what they have yeah i'm talking about nintendo but if we're if we're comparing everyone then we're, we're gonna have nintendo as like the low end yeah we're gonna have the ps4 as mid mid range or we're gonna have the uh microsoft console high end until sony oh, starts sure. back with something else right which will be which we don't even know what's happening yeah yeah it's it's a very weird it's time. a cluster it's a yeah it's a very weird time i've never seen this first time it's it's crazy uh, um, whatever yeah so more about the uh the playstation slim mm-hmm. uh so two USB ports in the front, yeah. Uh, in the back, uh, HDMI, Ethernet, the power thing, accessory port, five hundred gigabyte hard drive. How do you feel about that? That's a good amount. Yeah, it's all right. Um, I would have liked to see one terabyte, only because a, a lot of things now are are going online, right? Are going digital, in the cloud. Yeah, and digital games aren't exactly small all the time. They're not. And so it would have been nice to see the the one terabyte. Maybe they'll have that option. Who knows? Uh, but a terabyte, I feel like it would drive up the cost, which defeats the purpose of a slim. I don't think it would. Uh, not that much, man. No. Look, back in the day when terabyte was a new, you know, crazy look how much storage that is. Maybe I'd say, yeah. But uh, but in today's market, nah. It's true. It's not, a, it's not a solid state or anything like that. So No, it's yeah. like a regular. It's a normal hard drive. So it wouldn't, you know. Uh, on to more PlayStation news. PlayStation Now. Have you heard of this? Yeah. I okay. Have. Pretty upset. I kind of freaked out. That's weird. Everyone's upset. Well, I'm sure some people are loving it, but basically, <laughs> this is a monthly subscription. Uh, $20 a month or $100 a year, something like that. And you could play over 100 PS3 games on your PC and you stream them. So you don't need a crazy rig, apparently. But you need a good internet connection. Right, right. Okay, am I getting all this right? That's a, yeah, you I'm are. Through. Okay. And uh, what do you think about this? Well, I think it's good and bad at the same time. Okay, pros and cons, yeah. Right. I, I, it's pretty cool because if I do not own a PS3, and eventually even PS4, we can say, maybe down the line, uh, I can just pick this up. It's a hundred dollars a month, and I can play. It's a hundred dollars a year. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a month over here. Okay, a hundred dollars a year. An expensive service. <laughs> Holy crap! Uh, and you could literally play almost every game in the PS3 library. Over a hundred, dude. They said over a hundred. Yeah. Uh, almost every game, I'd say. Yeah. Well, we, we can assume. They, yeah, I guess so. I think that's a very good deal. The ones that matter. Oh, I guess it's a good deal. Look, PS3 titles. There were tons of good ones. I don't know. I don't know. Something about this bothers me. A monthly subscription bothers me. Okay. And you never really own the games. Yeah, because... Yeah, it's like a right. high-end rental service. It, it kind of is. Kind of. See, my issue with this is that a lot of people have tried this in the past, right? Oh, on live? Yeah. NVIDIA has pumped tons of money into developing this kind of technology. I don't know if we've heard anything about them. We haven't heard anything about it in What's a while. What's NVIDIA technology? Shield? Shield is their like mini console thing where they oh, also yeah. stream. Okay. And that's fine and all. Uh, they also came out with some sort of uh, presentation where they were talking about developing this technology. I don't know where they're at with it right now. I don't think they've updated us on anything. Okay. Uh, this is dangerous because, uh, like I'm sure you like doing, uh, I like buying physical copies of games. I like I like that collection, right? I like that opening the box. That, same here. Same. That here. you that smell. You know what I mean? Just that 
it's that fun. Fresh paper smell. Oh man, it's oh. good. It's good stuff, <laughs> right? I, I just like that. It's it's nice to have a physical copy. Just look at it to have your collection there in front of you, and it, it's just cool. You know what I think is gonna happen with this? I think people are gonna get this. Pay twenty dollars, get it for a month, play the shit out of everything, and then never touch it again. Yeah, I could see that happening. Yeah. Look, it it's cool to play a bunch. Of, look, you give a hundred dollars. And it's a year, right? Yeah, thinking it, it, it's good value in terms of a, a game is like 60, 70 bucks. It's crazy expensive for one game. Yeah. You pay $100. You have a year. How many games are you going to finish in a year? Yeah, that's right. I could finish a lot. You're right. For a, a one-year thing, it's great. Yeah. But I, I think Sony is doing this only because they want to test it out. I think they might try to make this a, a thing. Where instead of pumping out a console every year or every whatever, they're just going to use this and just start streaming stuff. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's weird scary. They're a console manufacturer. Yeah, but it's scary because if look if Nvidia is developing this technology, and Nvidia is pretty on, like they're on point when it comes to tech and innovations. Uh, it's it's just it's scary. It's scary to think of a world where there are no physical copies of games. It's scary to think of not having a physical console, of just sitting down, and not only just sitting down and playing, Greg, but you need to have a constant internet connection. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What happens, you know, it just, I, I don't like that. I know, me, me neither. Uh, there are a lot of people that don't have good internet connections. A lot right? of people still have shit internet, yeah. I mean, we're lucky we live here in Canada where uh, our internet is just... We have fast internet. Yeah, yeah, we're good. So that's scary too, right? In a world where you need internet, to play your game I don't like that that's weird and then uh, you, you have no physical copy it's just I don't know maybe we're just old old users <laughs> old school yeah I don't know I don't know I don't know I'll see it's weird we'll see how that pans out actually I'm quite curious um, now also uh, last little tidbit over here uh, PlayStation Plus is increasing in price it's going up in price uh, it used to be 50 bucks now it's going up to 60 it's about time no uh people i know people don't like it people are freaking out it's been what many many years it's been a long time yeah i mean inflation you know currency changes i guess it makes sense it makes a lot of sense it's gonna be 70 bucks here in canada which sucks yeah it sucks but do you even use playstation uh playstation plus no no i used to but uh not anymore their uh, their latest uh, free games haven't been that great. That Garbage. Giving. Yeah, I, I think it was a gimmick when it first came, look PlayStation Plus uh, PS4 first came out. They started giving all these really cool look. The first games that came out were awesome. Uh, yeah. Spelunky, just to name one. I remember there was yeah, Infamous. It was Infamous, yeah. Yeah, a few a few good ones. And then it just started going to the shitter. Uh, but I don't mind that that increase. It makes sense. It's it's about time, you know. Things do go up in price. Uh, the cost of living. It's just it's normal for things to go up in price. Well, Look so- at games. Sony's internet, uh, the whole net thing has gotten really really good because they used to trail so far behind Microsoft in terms of like Xbox out Xbox Live. You pay f- since day one, right? But it it was a good service. It was a solid service. They had dedicated servers. Yeah. Right. I remember the PS3. There were no dedicated servers. No. Uh, Sony has always been playing like catch up to yeah. Microsoft in the online space. They're getting really good. So I guess it's, if this no, helps. I have no problem with it at all. Yeah. Uh, actually, I wanted to ask you. Let's say you subscribe to PlayStation Now, right? On yeah. the PS- and let's say they're offering also PS4 games. Let's just say that happens. Ah, uh, but this is PS3 they're saying. Yeah, I know, oh, but let's just say. Hypothetically. Yeah, hypothetically. Are you going to also have to pay for a PlayStation Plus membership? To, be, to play on, like, multiplayer online? That's a good question. I have no idea how that works. Not only that. That'd get because- expensive. Yeah, because hold on, if you're streaming the game, you have to have someone else who has the subscription who's also streaming the game at the same time. <laughs> yeah. No, right? To yeah, me I would assume so. Okay. So is there, is there even multiplayer support in that? I don't know. Is there even trophy support? Oh, sh- good questions, man. Let's say you unlock know. a trophy, they'll be like, yeah, but this isn't actually your game, buddy. Ugh. Nah, you know what? It'll probably work trophy support. I hope. Are there even like, yeah, you can definitely save. That would be stupid. Imagine. It sounds sinister, but that's also another way to get a bunch of people to get this service like Trophy Horse. 
Oh, they're gonna buy this and just oh, go yeah, trophy you're crazy. Totally right, dude. <laughs> That's gonna be terrible. At the end of the year, like a thousand trophies. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Sony, so smart. Um, all right. Is uh, anything else to add? Uh, no. To nah, talk to the show, Pete. All right. Uh, let's go to the last bit of information here. Well, a few stories actually. Dark Souls Three. You'll see. see. Trailer landed. Yes. It's called uh, Ashes of Ariandel. Yeah. Ariando. Whatever. It looks amazing. I'm so happy. Okay, so let's just... Basically, you travel into this new snowy land. Frozen land. Frozen land. Oh, yeah. Like the Arctic. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. some. You see like some tundra, you know, just the way it looks. Um, you walk into this cathedral or castle. I don't know what it is. And there's just some guy handing you this. What is it? I, I guess it's the ash of Ariandel. Something like that. And he's like, don't talk about the flame. Yeah. I don't know. It just sounds so cool. It's, it's, it's it sick. looks awesome. Yeah. I'm, I have a theory. Mm-hmm. I think this takes place in the past. Oh, what makes you think that? Okay, so if we look at one of the Dark Souls 3 bosses, the dancer, the shadow dancer. Yeah, uh, yeah. People know what I'm talking about. The one with the uh, the flaming swords. Yeah. Okay. She moves all like she almost moves like liquid, you know. She's all skeletal and dark and undead looking, you know. Uh, in the regular game, in this one, you see snippets in the trailer of something very similar, but the woman has her skin. She looks human, almost. It's basically like the same model, right? Just yeah, with the face. I don't know. To me, it seems like the right. exact same boss, but this time you're fighting her when she's like living. You're absolutely so right. So I don't, I don't know. It's just a theory. It could just be Miyazaki fucking with us. But you know what else is very, uh, very cool? If you actually look at that model, you can see something like a like a flame in her body, kind of like your character when he. Uh... I noticed that. Yeah, you pointed that out. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. That very interesting. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with that. I'm liking the new um, some new mechanics where. I don't know if you saw it, but you can you have like a torch on you. You can blow fire. Yeah, the new spells looked crazy. The new sword. Oh, that giant! Whoa! Did you see that? Looked crazy. Yeah. Looked awesome. To be expected for I'm guessing the last DLC. I think so. The I, last thing. I don't think they announced pricing, but I know the old hunters for Bloodborne was about twenty bucks. Yeah, it wasn't bad at all. And that was a pretty meaty. So I'm guessing maybe about the same. Yeah. Because uh, this is gonna be have. A new area, that frozen area, a bunch of new boss battles, a bunch of new weapons. I'm guessing loot. Yeah, for sure. But uh, I want to know how this ties into the story. It's going to be sick. Typically, I don't think DLCs, I don't think Dark Souls DLCs tie into the story very, or maybe they just don't give us a lot of information. Like, the game well, itself they usually, I don't know, I feel like they usually, you go on like a side quest, but it kind of relates back, like, like Artorias. Right, you know, right. You've always heard about Artorias during the game, but you never actually fought the guy. And then this one, you go to Ulusil and you fight him and stuff yeah. like that. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Everything's very vague in the game anyway. So you can think... Yeah, like, that series is just so awesome. It's You yeah. never know what's happening. You just create your own little... Yeah. Yeah. And it's coming out October 25th, I think. Very soon. Yeah. Yeah, in the West, yep. Yeah. Also, uh, new PvP exclusive maps. I don't know, I'm not big on the pvp thing it took neither am i yeah yeah i mean uh, I, I think i i don't do much pvp it was always single player to me but you can get other people to come in your game and help you out or piss you off if they're trying i to always kill you. shat my pants when you would see invader yeah, yeah i would run i would like hide in a little corner and just like pray that this guy didn't find me oh uh, i try fighting them really? half the time i die though of course uh, the half of them are hacked anyway oh yeah yeah dude oh damn like infinite hp uh one hit ko I've never seen that, oh, okay, but okay. I'm sure it's yeah. around. Hey, you played on PC? Of course. Uh, oh, oh, there you go. That's okay, why. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, that looks very, very interesting. Pete, nine years. Nine years is how long it took for this game to get made. People probably don't know what I'm talking about. It's called Owl Boy. Um, this is a platformer. Uh, made by I think one dude in Norway uh, 
D-Pad Studios. Never heard of them. Yeah. Uh, I think this was announced back in 2007. Then went dark. I I was looking at it for a while. I found it very interesting. But then it just disappeared. Went off my radar. Completely forgot about it. And then it came back like just a few days ago. There was an announcement trailer. Uh, not an announcement trailer. Uh, almost like a launch trailer, I guess. Uh, with a date. Fall 2016. A release date. That's crazy. Nine years it took this dude to make a game. Looks awesome. Some of the nicest pixel art I've ever seen. And I thought about you straight away because I know you love platformers being a more Nintendo guy. Yeah, I love platformers. So you saw the trailer. What did you think? Well, you showed me, yeah. And um, I thank you so much for showing me this because it's totally my shindig. Yeah. The bright colors, the the pixel art, just everything. Uh, it just brings the nostalgia. It brings me back to my childhood. <laughs> Green grass and blue skies. Oh, can't ask for anything else. It, yep. it, I mean, reminds me of uh, Kirby, uh, Super Mario World, and the SNES. Yeah, it harkens back to all that greatness, you know? Yeah. All those great platformers with all those vibrant colors. You I love give me that anything stuff. that looks like that, and I will just gobble it up. Yeah. Um, this one's very cool because it's very vertical, right? It's a platform, but you're going up and... They... Yeah, apparently your main character, Otis is like an owl, half owl or whatever owl yeah. boy. you can pick up mostly everything you can throw things and apparently a lot of the game's mechanics involve you picking up another character like some of your allies and like they have a gun and they'll shoot yeah i saw that that was very cool so it's very interesting and you're fighting like sky pirates they're the main antagonist it yeah. looks it just looks cool there's actually a demo available i don't know how old the demo is though i must be old at this point yeah you think it changed from uh well from the bit of footage i saw the demo and then this trailer yeah it looks like the game got a like an overhaul it just looks that much better i, I find okay but uh well you would assume so right after uh, five six years of development or however long it's been it's been forever yeah well, i thought got, that, i, I thought the game got canceled it. okay a while ago i just thought he stopped making it you know what it looks like to me uh it actually looks a little bit like momodora it's also a, an indie yeah not many people know about it but it, it kind of yeah all those indie thing pixel art uh, yeah but this one i find really stands out just the just the colors the animations the look of it. it's very nintendo-esque it is it almost i almost feel like it should be on a it screams nintendo and yeah. who knows man uh the way nintendo has been going lately they've been picking up a lot of these indie uh, look they have shovel knight yeah on their but console. everyone got shovel knight yeah i know but still yeah they have a lot of uh, they have that little indie it's coming to Steam. They have an indie section. I don't know if you knew about that. Yeah, yeah. In, uh, on the Wii U? Yeah. So who knows? They, they might pick it up. I think they should. Yeah. But uh, I know it's coming on Steam. Fall 2016, around the corner. Should be out. We should pick it up. Oh, I'm picking Quick it up, guaranteed. Like yeah. Um, what else? Oh, pit people, dude. Yes. Oh, pit my God. Pit people. Pit people. This game... Uh, I love strategy games. I love turn-based strategy games. It's my jam. And when the Behemoth announced that game number four, which became Pit People, was going to be a strategy game, because these guys always hop genres. None of their games are ever the same genre. I was super pumped because I love that stuff. I love their art style. Um, I played all their other games. My favorite one was uh, Castle Crashers. Yeah, I played that one. Super before. popular. Yeah, just a great game. A great beat em up. Alien Hominid was great. Very difficult. Uh, and Battle Block Theater, I played a bit. It was an interesting platformer, but it didn't hold my attention for too, too long. This one looks crazy. Um, we saw a 20 minute uh, gameplay. Yeah, so. We saw trailers. What'd you think? Before we saw the. Before I saw any any gameplay, any uh, anything about it, when I heard that it was a uh, turn based strategy, I, I just. I was very disappointed. Yeah, they're calling it a. I don't like those kind of games. Okay, yeah, it's true. I, I, not that I can't play them, they just don't interest me. Okay, fair like, enough. Yeah, you know? What's wrong with you? Don't ask. It's a sick. A lot of things wrong with me. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but I saw gameplay, I saw the trailer, and it actually looks very fun. It doesn't look like, it doesn't look like a, a game where you have to sit there and really think and strategize. Yes, there's strategy involved, but it's nothing crazy. It's nothing too convoluted. It's not too complex from what we saw. I think it might become that later on go through the game but it's teaching you along the way right so it doesn't become too crazy what you get you used think, to it what do you think about the way battles play out because in other games like Final Fantasy Tactics Disgaea things like that 
you make your movements and then you start executing your attacks this one is like more of a even the developers calling it a strategic game of positioning and what i mean by that is you place your people on the grid and then let's say they're adjacent to two enemies or two enemies are adjacent to your character you don't really know which one the character might hit they're kind of semi autonomous, autonomous. yeah it's weird like they think on their own you move them but i like that a lot i think it's cool yeah so do you think this is interesting does, like, does this interest yeah of course you? it's interesting look it does something that rts is just haven't done before right i don't think they have well i don't know if this is an rts beat uh so, sorry i mean the world map is real time apparently you yeah. travel everything's real time but battles are turn-based right right, right, right. Yeah. you're absolutely right yeah um yeah so i think that this game does something that turn-based games just don't do too often and that's uh it opens it up for for mainstream gamers for people that are just not very uh used to these kind of games yeah because some of these tactics games man they're deep they're too much yeah, yeah it, for me anyway it, it just did it, it over it just frustrates me when i play these kind of games uh, <laughs> too many numbers too many uh, yeah but looking at this it looks very welcoming not only that but the narration the narrator's hilarious oh, i can't get enough of him i mean it's too funny uh, the first, I don't know, the first 20 minutes when he's just talking to your to your guy, your main character. He's just talking shit to your main character <laughs> for 20 minutes. It's awesome. I loved it. Actually, he has been used many times before, right? I think they've, yeah, they've used him for other games to do their voice acting. Yeah. I don't know, I think he's just part of the team right now. He's brilliant, though. I love I forgot him. his name, but you can go look him up. He's awesome. Yeah, so uh, I just, I can't wait for this game. Uh, dude, did you get any Pokemon vibes? From this game okay pokemon is a, a bit of a stretch but there is a recruiting element to this game yeah where one of the characters sophia we don't know if it's going to be only her but she can throw a net and what does this net do you catch and recruit other characters you catch cage <laughs> yeah <laughs> and eventually they do your bidding torture and subdue no but uh <laughs> probably actually and uh, you add them to your team. And it seems like uh, there's going to be, not classes, but I guess you could say that. There's a cupcake. And this cupcake uh, acts as a healer. Yeah. So I know you're going to be meeting characters throughout the story progression. Like once you see the 20 minute video, it, it does a pretty good job at explaining. And you can also catch these other classes. Because there's all kinds of monsters in this, like... It looks like a million classes. Everything looks different. So well, look, you have happen. like your healer class, right? Like that cupcake thing? Yeah. But that cupcake, cupcake thing is wielding a, a bow and arrow. And from what I got, I think you could equip different items to different characters. It looks like you can customize the crap out of everything. Yeah. That's what's so appealing. So maybe there aren't classes per se. Maybe it's just a free-for-all. And maybe some characters are more attuned towards certain... Weapons. Yeah, so maybe you can turn the cupcake into a ca tank. Yeah, maybe. With, with enough. That'd be cool. Yeah. Or maybe different gear. cupcakes do different things. Maybe it's just, maybe. Okay, so we see we see a cupcake. We see some uh, some weird soldier looking people. All kinds, yeah. Right, a cyclops. Unicorn. Right. A bat. Now are all these? So do these? Uh, I want to call them subclasses, or I don't know what to call them. These these <sighs> creatures, know. right? Yeah, I guess so. So do all the cupcakes, uh, cupcake creatures. Are they all healers? I wish I could answer you, Pete. But I can't. I don't know. <laughs> what, what, do you, what would you want to see? Would you want to see them all be the same? Every cupcake you meet will be a healer? I would like to see, like, let's say every cupcake would be a healer, but you can equip them with better gear so it can actually fight back and defend itself. But I, f I, I found the recruiting uh, mechanic pretty awesome, actually. It's cool. Yeah, I like catch them all now. I like how I don't know how if I don't know if it will change throughout the game, but I like how you get into a battle and maybe there's two, three, four guys. Now let's say you see two of them and you really want them. The game goes no, 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 no. You gotta get rid of everyone first and leave the one guy that you actually want. So you gotta pick. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah, you basically have to kill everybody and leave the person or thing you want for last, and then catch it. 
rather than just catching everyone because I yeah. guess that would just become ridiculous yeah I, I love it I love the way the game looks I love the way it sounds I'm gonna probably love the way it plays I love these type of games Look, these guys know how to make like just clean polished just very good games I that love, are fun I love the art style they're funny yeah they're great to play tons of replay value usually yeah tons most of the time yeah so uh, I'm just I'm really looking forward to it do we have a a uh, release date no uh, not really I know there's uh, gonna be a closed beta on the Xbox one yeah uh, September 8th to the 15th so you can go sign up for that and like beta test the game it's also gonna come to Steam uh, traditionally these the behemoth these guys have always been more with Xbox but uh, some some of the games make their way to PlayStation like Castle Crashers but later a lot later so I'm probably gonna picking up picking it up on Steam okay well it's not a, a, an intensive game anyway you don't need like a crazy ass rig to play it no so I just wonder how much it's gonna cost right because right. I don't know I don't and know if it's gonna be a small game do you think there's gonna be multiplayer functionality I, I know we saw like player 2 there's supposed to be PvP and co-op and so, single player okay yeah. so there's co and there's also PvP yeah there I'm is. guessing maybe that Coliseum that we see that was yeah, locked. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it could be that. That'd be very cool. I wonder how co-op's gonna work. That's strange, though, eh? Are you sure there's co-op? I think so, yeah. Hmm. Well, maybe. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Yeah. Should be, uh... We should get a release date soon. I mean, it's been in development forever. Look, Feels typically... Like forever. I mean, closed beta? You think there's gonna be an open beta? No, huh? I don't know. Yeah, it should be around the corner. Should be. Anyway. Anything else to add, Pete? Dude, I think that's it, man. It's been a slow week anyway. It has. Yeah. All right. So this has been the Double Shockers podcast episode four, and we're going to wrap things up. This has been uh, Greg Jones. Peter K. Signing off. Later, guys.